Hello, and welcome to Picture This, a podcast from the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum. My name is Jill Hartke, and I'm the digital archivist here at the museum. Today, we go on a balloon ride with saloon keeper Park Van Tassel as we look at the photograph of his historic launch from what was then downtown Albuquerque, way back in 1882. Albuquerque's International Balloon Fiesta is a world-class event that occurs every October. It's when tens of thousands of people come together to watch hundreds of hot air balloons fly across the city. The first balloon fiesta was held in 1972, and it's occurred every year since. But the first time a balloon was launched in Albuquerque occurred way back in 1882, 90 years before balloon fiesta began. That was when, as part of the city's 4th of July celebration that year, a 29-year-old blonde bartender and saloon owner named Parker Van Tassel was paid to launch a balloon from a vacant lot at 2nd Street and Gold Avenue. In the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum is a copy of a photograph showing a crowd of people, adults and children, on the ground as well as on the roof of a nearby building waiting for the launch of Van Tassel's big balloon. Here's the story behind the photograph. Park Van Tassel spent the then colossal sum of $850 for a balloon. That's about $21,500 in today's money. The balloon was made of what's called gold beater's skin, the tear-resistant outer membrane of a cow intestine, a netting of hemp rope linked the balloon to the wicker gondola below. Van Tassel imported this balloon from San Francisco, and he renamed it the City of Albuquerque, agreeing to conduct a July 4th holiday balloon launch. He even planned to carry a newspaper man along on this pioneering flight, all the better to publicize his feat. The balloon was enormous, with a capacity of about 30,000 cubic feet, though that's less than half the size of today's hot air balloons. Buoyancy was to be achieved with coal gas, which was usually used for indoor lighting. The coal gas was siphoned from a pipeline near the gas company plant, which was located at 2nd Street and what was then called Railroad Avenue, but now we know it as Central Avenue. Van Tassel expected the balloon to be fully inflated in just a few hours. So on the evening of July 3rd, he attached the balloon to the gas company's pipeline and announced he would lift off at 10 o'clock the next morning, July 4th. Unfortunately, his inflation calculations failed to take into account pre-holiday partying. The saloons all kept their gas lamps burning to serve those patrons who celebrated Independence Day a little early. Cheers! Those lamps used the same coal gas which Van Tassel needed to inflate his balloon. So, by 10 o'clock the next morning, when a crowd of thousands had gathered to see the balloon lift off... There was little to see except the mostly deflated balloon. As the day progressed, people grew tired of waiting for the launch, and they departed for activities going on in Old Town. Van Tassel announced his new liftoff time as 6 p.m. and asked everyone to return to Newtown to participate in this historic moment. When 6 p.m. arrived, the balloon was still only two-thirds inflated, but Van Tassel was determined to launch. His calculations had accounted for a fully inflated balloon being able to carry the weight of two men plus all their accessories. Now, after some quick math, the newspaper man departed the basket along with some equipment, and eventually the balloon began to hover over the ground, but it was still too heavy to fully launch. In his final attempt to launch, Park Van Tassel tossed a sandbag over the side of the basket. The sand hit a spectator, who later sued Van Tassel for injuries. But the move did the trick. Van Tassel and the city of Albuquerque lifted off over Newtown to a throng of cheering spectators, except for probably the sandbag person. As he rose, Van Tassel waved an American flag and dropped flyers advertising his elite saloon onto the heads of spectators. 
Van Tassel floated a mile or so over the city, and then he hit an air current, which rapidly lifted the balloon up to over 14,000 feet. This may be the first recorded instance of a balloon hitting that famed Albuquerque box. The altitude caused Van Tassel to have difficulty breathing, and he became very cold. With fumbling hands, he couldn't get the valve on top of the balloon's envelope to open so that he could descend. Finally, the valve opened and the balloon began to sink, too rapidly. Then, the struggle was to close the valve. With the ground getting ever nearer and only the river to land in, Van Tassel finally managed to close the valve and take a breath. (sighs) But now, he's too close to the ground. Van Tassel needed more lift, so he threw things from the basket, including his coat, bottles of water, and even his packed lunch. The balloon rose once more and began drifting toward Old Town. As nightfall descended, so did Van Tassel. He was near enough to the ground to throw his anchor into a ditch and land safely in a cornfield by the fairgrounds in West Old Town. There he was greeted by supporters who helped load the balloon, the city of Albuquerque, into a wagon. Then, they all returned to the Elite Saloon in Newtown, where Van Tassel celebrated his successful flight, the first in Albuquerque. Cheers! Thank you for joining us for Picture This from the Albuquerque Museum. Join us next time for the story behind another photograph in the museum's collection.